Hey folks, welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. I've got a uh, new e-bike here to review, and uh, this e-bike is made by uh, Tomo Free. Uh, it is the FG20, and uh, this e-bike. Now, when I've reviewed several e-bikes, as you know, over the last couple of years. I love e-bikes. I ride one all the time, uh, and they are my main transportation uh, for running errands and going to town. Uh, to pick up supplies and things like that. So I ride an e-bike all the time. And I know what I like about e-bikes. Now I like this style of e-bike. Now this style of e-bike is generally what they would call a moped style. Uh, I prefer to call it an adventure e-bike uh, because it is designed for both off-road and on-road riding. This has some special features that you might not find on some other e-bikes. Uh, let's start with the motor. Uh, this has a 1200 watt uh, motor and it is uh, a rear hub drive motor. 1200 watts is a lot of power. Uh, that will generally, and this bike is specified that it will go up to 30 miles per hour, and I have tested it, and on the, on the LED display, it does show that it goes up to 30 miles per hour. I haven't checked that with GPS, but it shows that it goes up 30 miles per hour, and that's totally expected with a 1200 watt motor. Now, that 1200 watt motor is connected to a 48 volt 18 amp hour battery. Now you'll notice that this battery looks different and this is one of the very unique features about this bike. They have put the battery down so it is in the center of the mass. You can see that it's centered over the pedals. Now what that does is that that puts the weight down where it's supposed to be where you see some bikes are trying to put their uh, batteries up here or maybe they've got them underneath the frame here or on the front here. That weight displacement should be down here. This is where a battery should be, somewhere in this area right in here for an e-bike so the center of the mass stays low because you're up high on your seat. When you're sitting on your seat, you're up high, okay? If this battery is up here, you've added a bunch of top weight. That makes the bike tippy, a little harder to control, could cause an accident, be dangerous, especially if you do much off-road riding. So they've done a good job putting the battery where it's supposed to be. But they went farther than that. They actually include this inside this, uh, what I think is probably a, a cast aluminum or an aluminum uh, box. Now this is, this is hard metal. This is a, an aluminum box, okay, on both sides. And the battery can be taken out and then lifted up. You slide it forward. Whoops, I got the key in it. That's why it's not going anywhere. It does come with two keys to lock it in. You slide it forward. And then you can lift the battery out and take it out to charge it, or you can charge it directly on the bike. Now, I like this arrangement. This is a very solid mount, uh, and especially if you're doing much off-road riding, that box right there is going to protect it from getting hit by the weeds, from the sticks. Uh, if you tip it over on the rocks, that's going to protect your battery. Batteries are expensive to replace, folks, so this is a very good idea for a bike that might be road off-road. All right, that's one of the special features I like about this. Now you'll notice this has more of a squared frame. And you'll notice one of the main features here is it has a really long seat. This comes standard uh, with this long seat. Now they designed that so that this is designed for two people to ride. Now, I don't generally ride with a passenger, but a lot of people do. And I can tell you this seat is very comfortable. It has that, it's, uh, you can see how much it depresses. It has that uh, uh, what they call a motorcycle style foam, which is a very soft. It's actually a really comfortable ride. I'm, I'm not lying to you. That's a very comfortable seat because it's really thick. It's almost three inches, I'd say. And that comfortable foam gives you a really nice, soft, comfortable ride on your bum. Okay. But one thing that I don't like about it is because they made this seat for two people, but then they didn't include any foot pegs for a passenger. Okay, I'm going to talk to them about that because they should really include foot pegs if you're going to have a seat that can handle two people. Now, some people will say, well, I don't like the long seat. I'm not planning on riding with a passenger. You can uh, easily modify this seat. And for you guys out there that like to modify your bikes, you could easily modify this seat to be a single person seat, which I will probably do. And then I will probably put my tank bag up here because that's how I like it. But for people that do have a passenger and want to ride with a passenger, they send the long seat then you can uh, modify it if you want to. Now some other features. You notice this has high handlebars. And I love this. Uh, I've had some other styles of, of uh, e-bikes like this where the handlebars were lower. That puts kind of puts you in a forward angle. 
it's kind of hard on your neck and back, especially if you're an old guy like me. I much prefer this. And you can see I'm 5'7", and I can sit very comfortably on this e-bike, okay? I, I have to kind of touch with my toes. Uh, but, you know, this would be a good bike for a person that's size 5'7", up to maybe 6 foot, would be a good size for this e-bike here. And I like these handlebars. I like the height of them. I feel very comfortable. They're also quite wide, which I'll show you when I turn this around to face you. The handlebars feel like motorcycle width. They're the same width as on my motorcycle, I think. And that makes me feel very comfortable because I do take this off-road and I, I, I have a very, I'm kind of an upright position instead of leaning over into my handlebars. And so I can ride nice and comfortably, can even ride with one hand. And so I, I like that high style of handlebars. Now, uh, I'll bring you around and talk about some of the other features on this e-bike here, but from the side, you can see that this comes with uh, the 4-inch tires. This has a 20 by 4-inch tires, front and rear. You can see that the rims have the uh, rim cutouts, okay? And this is, it's not just for looks, folks. This actually helps uh, in shock absorption because it gives the uh, tube inside some extra expansion room, okay? So if you hit a really hard bump, uh, this actually acts as some type of shock absorption uh, on your rims by having those cutouts. They also look kind of cool. You will notice that this is a hardtail. It does not have rear suspension. It does have front uh, suspension. However, the front suspension is not adjustable. Okay, this is a uh, mid-level e-bike uh, price, and so they haven't put on the more expensive adjustable front shocks. However, it does seem to have very good uh, front shock support. Okay. And uh, I think travel distance, I don't know exactly what it is, but it, it'll take a hard bump and, and keep you on the road. I took it off-road, and it rode just fine uh, over the rocks. I didn't really even notice any of the bumps, okay? But it is a hard tail, so that's why you need that soft seat. And uh, the rear, rear wheel cutouts will also help with some absorb some of that shock. Now, uh, let's see. It does come with the fenders, comes with the rear. These are those poly fender, fenders. Comes with both the rear and the front fender. And it does come with uh, a seven-speed uh, Shimano shifter, okay, uh, with the thumb control, so you can adjust it with your thumb. And uh, the cartridge back here appears to be a nice size. Uh, it's the Shimano. This is pretty standard for these size bikes now. In fact, I see them on pretty much all of these e-bikes now are carrying the Shimano seven-speed shifter uh, because they hold up. They're, they're well-made. Uh, you know, they can take some abuse, so they're good that way. And uh, it also, as you can see, it comes with a headlight. So I'll turn this around here. And this bike, I'd say, I didn't actually weigh it, but you can see I can lift it up. Uh, I'd say probably around uh, 75, 80 pounds, right around there. And uh, you can see that this does have a headlight. This is the LED style headlight, which I like. It's better than the uh, old style headlights. Uh, it has this fancy little grate over the front of it. Uh, which kind of gives it just a, a different look, okay, more than anything. The headlight is adjustable, okay. On swivels here, you can adjust this. Now, what's neat about this headlight is, uh, and one of the features that I really like about this e-bike, is this actually has its own uh, headlight button. You know, you, know, you know how some e-bikes, in order to turn on the headlight, you have to mess with your LED control, your display up here or you touch the buttons on the display to turn your headlight on. This has its own headlight button, which I'll turn on here. Okay, so I've got the e-bike turned on. It's got its own headlight button, which you can turn on. There, it's on. And it's actually very bright. Uh, you know, it's daytime, so you're not gonna see it, but it's actually very bright uh, headlight. And it's also got a, uh, a wired tail light, okay? Both of them work off of this button that's right on here. It's very standard. It's a lot like a motorcycle button. And another feature that I really like, it has a horn. Okay, not one of those little ding-ding bells that they send on a lot of e-bikes. This actually has a horn like a car horn. Listen to this. So it has a horn and a headlight button uh, separate from your LED display, which I really like. Okay, I'll turn this around and show the tail light to you. So there you can see the tail light. It has a really bright, good looking tail light. They even include a license plate holder because this can go up to 30 miles per hour. Uh, in some places, they may want to register and license it as a uh, moped. So they include a license plate holder down here if you want to put it on a license plate, or you can just get one off of Amazon that has your name on it or something like that to identify your e bike. And uh, you know, that's, that's kind of a nice feature. It has a good tail light. Again, here you can see the button on the front. That's the uh, headlight and tail light button. And then here's the horn button, which I really like, okay? 
Here's the LED display, which I'll give you a closer view of it, but you can go. Okay, so here you can see the uh, dashboard. Uh, this has the uh, LED, and it has a very bright LED. I can see this very well. Uh, it has the battery level indicator over here with uh, five battery levels. It has an odometer and trip meter here. Uh, the speed limit, uh, or your speed that you're going, your mode, uh, your pedal assist. And I've got in pedal assist three. It does go up to pedal assist five. Uh, pedal assist five is about 30 miles per hour. Pedal assist three is right around 24 miles per hour, which is where I ride it most of the time uh, and it also shows you how many watts you're using while you're riding now this bike is set to the maximum there is no code you can put in to make it go any faster folks it is set to the maximum because it is a class 3 uh, e-bike it is set so that it can go up to 30 miles per hour I can tell you that the speed limits on these are generally about one or two miles off so it's probably closer to 28 miles per hour which is the legal limit for a class 3 e-bike just so you know uh, I haven't checked it with GPS it does say 30 miles per hour on the the uh, speed limit control okay this also has hydraulic disc brakes both front uh, left and rear uh, right and uh, I really like these uh, hydraulic disc brakes on this bike I took it out got it up to 30 miles per hour and and checked out those brakes and it stopped me really fast okay very very good brakes on this e-bike so I'm you know I like that uh, and there was no squeaking at all uh, and uh, you know a very good uh, well put together and well made bike all the welds on it seem to be very good uh, I don't see any uh, manufacturing errors at all on this e-bike and uh, everything well made and it also went together really fast the only thing that I had to put on I put the front wheel on it just has two bolts and a lock nut that goes or a lock tab that goes in put the two nuts on that you have to tip the handlebars into place and then just use the uh, included tools they include the tools so that you can uh, tighten down the uh, connector the holder that goes over the handlebars and like I said I really like the height of those handlebars uh, you have to attach the front fender and the uh, headlight uh, and the headlight it just adjusts over you just have two clamps and you adjust it over and it already has the rubber pads to protect the frame and the headlight is adjustable it is an LED headlight all right that's this uh, uh, Tomo free e-bike uh, and you can see I like the, the profile it's a good looking e-bike here you can see it from the other side very good looking e-bike. I especially like the way they've protected that battery. Uh, and I should get a lot of use uh, on-road and off-road riding this e-bike. Thumb shifter. Now this does have a throttle. This can be drove a road in either pedal assist or throttle. And the throttle is a thumb throttle. It's not the twist throttle. It is a thumb throttle. Now I won't turn that because then the bike could take off on me. It has a thumb throttle so you use your thumb to push down on it, the throttle instead of turning the uh, twist throttle. Took me a minute to get used to that, but once you get used to it, it's no different than riding any other throttle. Now, in pedal assist, this has five levels of pedal assist. Uh, anywhere you can go from like 10 miles an hour clear up to 30 miles per hour uh, on uh, pedal assist five. Or you can just use the throttle alone without pedaling at all, okay? So you can ride it like a motorcycle if you want to or a moped, uh, which, uh, you know, a lot of us do on these types of bikes. Range on this bike, uh, because this is a 48 volt, 18 amp hour battery like I've said I've had a lot of uh, e-bikes in the past I know about how much uh, range they will generally get this e-bike even though I haven't checked the range should get somewhere between uh, 30 and 35 miles of range riding just on throttle longer than that farther than that if you're doing in pedal assist one or two you can get a lot more miles out of it of course however uh, this bike because they are kind of heavy between 75 80 pounds uh, you don't want to really run your battery down and try and pedal this very far. It would get you a mile or two if you happen to not make it quite home and you need to pedal that last mile or so to get home. You could do it on this e-bike. As long as there's no big hills, I wouldn't want to pedal this up a hill. They're not really designed for pedaling without the battery. It is an e-bike. You're expected to be using the battery. Uh, the battery does come with the uh, charger. Uh, it charges up in, you know, first time you want to charge up for about eight hours. Uh, then from uh, low, it should take you about five to six hours, somewhere right around there, to charge up the battery. And then you're good to go. And, you know, with 30, 35 miles range, you got a couple days worth of riding, probably, uh, back and forth to work or whatever before you have to charge it again. So I'm going to show you this bike. I'll take it out on some rides, and I'll, I'll give you some more uh, demonstrations of how it rides. But I can tell you, I like the style. Uh, there are, like I said, I would ask that they include foot pegs 
for a passenger since they uh, made this seat for two people. Uh, it, the seat is modifiable. I really like the display. I, I love the way they did the battery box down here. It's got a seven-speed Shimano shifter. It's got a 1,200 watt motor, four-inch tires with the tire cutouts, and so it, and the uh, headlight button and the horn button are a, an extra uh, that I really like on, as a feature on these e-bikes. I wish more e-bikes would decide to include those. And another thing they may consider is putting on. A turn signal. I really think these e-bikes need a turn signal. Now, the other thing that I would recommend, before you ever go riding, make sure you got some mirrors. And the next time I show you this e-bike, I will put my mirrors on to show you, because I don't ever ride anywhere without mirrors on my e-bike so I can see what's coming up behind me. All right, folks, I hope you like this video. Uh, and I look forward to uh, doing some more ride testing with it and show you how this e-bike works.